employee mindset says yes to everything. Everything. Hey, uh, you want to volunteer for this? Yeah, I do. Hey, you want to go away on a weekend? Yeah, I do. Do you want to do some stuff on Wednesday night instead of come to training? Yeah, I do. You want to do something on Monday morning instead of show up? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'll do, I'll do anything. I'll, uh, I'll, oh, doctor's appointment next, uh, next Monday at 10? Yeah, I'll take it. Miss training. Entrepreneurs say no to opportunities because they've created a framework that's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable framework. Now, are there certain things you're going to say yes to? Yeah. Employees say yes to everything. So look, I want to I want to talk about some things that I think will take you and your team and this team to the next level. Okay? I want you to write this down. Today my entire talk is around mindset and mental toughness for entrepreneurship. There's a mindset. There's a mindset that you need to develop. We need to develop, me included, in order to be successful as an entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about a whole a whole bunch of things today. I just need you to I just need you to put yourself in a good place right now. Nobody's talking at you. Nobody's sending you messages across the bow. Oh my god, did he write this talk for me? No. These are all things that I have failed at and all things that I have worked on to get to where I am today. These are all things that I constantly battle with, but these are the things and this is the mindset that you need to be successful. Does that make sense? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Right? So I'm talking to you today from experience. I'm not at you. I'm sitting right beside you, Brady. I'm, I'm beside you. My arms are around you. I'm leaning into you and I'm talking from experience. So I have a, I have a slide deck that I'll get to in a minute. Not right, not yet, but I want to talk about, I want to talk about three keys to winning in business. And then I'm going to get into my slide deck. The first thing, and this is all around mindset and mental toughness. The first thing that is required to be successful is this. You have to create some framework to succeed. You have to create some framework to succeed. In 2009, some of you don't know my story, but in 2009, I'd been sick the entire year. I had a couple major surgeries. I was coming off major bowel resection. I still had wounds. I was still in the hospital a couple of times a week. They were getting cauterized shut for seven years. I was going to the hospital to get my wounds cauterized. So in two, and 2009 was a nightmare. It was, a, it was a nightmare year. It was, I, the hospital food for 10 months is a nightmare. Okay? Right, Lachelle Daisy? You know. It was, a, it, was, it, was, it was everything that you don't want to have happen to you is what happened to me in 2009. Out of the game, out of the environment, sick, unhealthy, really, really dark thoughts, feeling weak physically, lo like looked, looked, looked frail, 123 pounds was my lowest, and I'm 198 right now. So you can imagine me at 123. My, I remember my, the day my dad and I, my dad took me a walk around the unit, and he was holding my arm. I got a picture of it. The nurse was holding my arm at that time, right? This is what you do. I mean, you gotta, you gotta do what you got. I had a girlfriend, but I wasn't, I wasn't trying to do that with her, but you know what I mean? <laughs> We're walking around. I remember they have those big, you know, those big scales they have in the units where you just kind of like step on them. I stepped on it and it was 123 pounds. So I had all these emotions going on. I had, I had, you know, I had been in the business for five years. I'd only had, I'd only had like 11 or 12 licenses at the time. Like I had a lot of uncertainty going on. You check the leaders board and you had people like Paxton and Greg just blowing by me standing still. And I just thought, man, like, am I ever, am I ever going to have, am I ever going to be able to get back? Like, where do you start, Brady, when you're rock bottom? Where do you guys start when you're absolutely rock bottom, zero confidence, no belief in yourself? Where do you start? You have to put some parameters in place. You need to, you need to create a structure, some kind of framework that if you operate within that frame, you at least give yourself a chance to start to recover. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the first thing was I created some framework. So, I, so what did I do? I, I, I wrote things down on paper. I started with building out what I wanted on paper. And maybe you would need to hear this again, maybe for the 10th time or first time, whatever it is. I built it on paper. I still have it. 
I still have it. I wrote down what kind of a team I wanted. The best trained, most tight knit, system driven. Do it right. I wanted the number one culture, Nick. I wrote down one of the number one culture in WFG. And we don't have it yet because Team Pinnacle has the number one culture, but we are coming for the number one culture in WFG. Because if we can build the number one do it right culture, which we do have, and that's not taking away from any of the hierarchies, we have the number one do it right culture in all of WFG. If you do a golf score of culture and do it right, this is the number one team in WFG. But I wrote all of those things down, Brady, not when I was winning, not when we were recruiting, not when I was making all this money, not when I was getting all the trophies, but when I was at rock bottom, when I didn't feel like getting up, when I didn't feel like showing up, when I, didn't, when I wasn't sure if I was gonna ever figure this thing out. That's when I made those decisions. That's when I identified what those things were at the bottom. And I wrote down culture, identity. And then the second thing I did, write this down, this is all under topic one, create framework, is I, I set some firm hours of operation. And don't tune out, oh, here's the office talk again. Don't tune out with me right now. I don't care what your hours of operation are. I don't care. I, if you got with me one-on-one -on -one and you told me your goals, and we were in the moment, I might care. But right now, it doesn't matter. Everyone's different. Employees' mindset is, employees are gonna do the business when they're not busy. If you think like an employee, you're probably the kind of person that's gonna do this when you're not busy. Oh, as long as I don't have any kids' activities, as long as I'm not tired, as long as there's no family events, as long as there's no work engagements, I'm gonna win big here. That's the employee mindset. People that win in business have non-negotiable frameworks. Non-negotiable frameworks. Now, there's the one-off. Mom's in the hospital. Son broke his leg. There's a dance final competition I can't miss. I mean, that's obvious stuff. If we have to start listing them out, we're not thinking about this clearly. I needed the framework, but are you negotiating your hours of operation? Is every day for you different? Is every day different? You know, people come into business and go, oh, I get to control my time. Yeah, eventually you do. But if you come into this business and your mindset early on in the bit, too early is I get to control my schedule, you are gonna lack so much confidence in your ability to win here, it's not even gonna be funny. You're gonna doubt yourself every day. You're gonna wonder if you can ever get this thing going. Hear me on this. Hear me on this. When you set, when you set uncomfortable and non-negotiate business boundaries, it's the blueprint for you to start to build that confidence. I didn't want to rely on my personal discipline to win. I didn't have enough. Mike, I didn't have enough personal discipline to win. I didn't want to rely on luck. I didn't want to rely on chance. I didn't want to rely on somebody else on my team doing it. Ed Milet said this, says it all the time. He said, confidence comes from keeping promises to yourself. What did I need in 09? What did I need, Kel? Confidence. confidence. We're a good team. <laughs> I needed confidence. What? Mike, I wasn't recruiting. My base shop was falling apart. I know nobody coming to meetings. There was a Winnipeg convention four years into the business. How many people we have there? No, who? Two. Cam, remember Winnipeg convention? Winnipeg convention four years into the business. Two people go to convention. I was rock bottom. I was rock bottom bottom and I wasn't so sure they were still in their survival phase they could have gone either way how long have you been here Audrey she's been here one year she's the equitable equitable thing last night is one of the top advisors her first year I'm four years in I got two people to convention I needed some framework so I needed to listen to me I needed to set myself up so I could at least keep one promise you know what the one promise I could keep to myself when I go to bed the night before, I told myself what time I'm going to be at the office the next day, and I always hit it. It was the number one way I pulled myself out. 
It was the first promise I kept to myself. We're like, oh, I don't know if I could do it. Holbrook does. He's at the office all the time. I do it for me because I lack confidence in my ability to get big here. I still doubt myself. I still wonder if I can be an executive chairman. I read it every day. Sounds good when I read it. But I still doubt it because I'm working on my identity. If I fully believed it, I'd already be there. Does that make sense? You never fully believe it until you achieve it. And the first way to do it is set some boundaries, set some framework, and stop letting yourself down. I didn't talk about being good at the script yet. I didn't talk about being world-class phone call, world-class closer. I talked about setting yourself up to win. Just simply put, that's what I talk about when I talk about showing up. What's going on tomorrow? Be at the office by 9.30. Then be there at 9.30. Uh, uh, God, stuff got in the way of, you know, 10.45. Okay. So it's fine. It's your business. It's your life. It's your goals. I'll see you Wednesday. Don't show up. Okay. It's all good. It's your business. It's your life. It's your goals. I don't have that kind of confidence to know that if I don't show up, I'm going to win. I don't have that supreme level. Personally, I don't, I'm not that confident. And if you are that confident, hey, good on you. But the numbers will reflect it. See, people, I knew that people were going to quit on me. I knew there was going to be months where I made no money here. I know that I needed to put myself in, a, in an environment where I could handle that kind of stuff. I can't handle people quitting while I'm at home. I can't handle chargebacks while I'm sitting at home. I can't handle bad stuff going on when I'm not in this environment. This is my safe place. I deal with all my shit here because I can. Because I leave the office and I get to go talk to Pauline and she fires me up. And when I'm having a bad day and, and my best leader is trying to quit, I walk down the hallway and I see Amber Bateman, sun, a ray of sunshine. I walk over to Jarrett and he's playing some weird country music and <clears throat> probably <laughs> sipping on a skiff of whiskey. <clears throat> right? Chad's doing a call or online shopping for shoes. <laughs> I mean, it's a feel good place. I'm just talking about me. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about what I need to do to win here. If you're like, oh, I wish I had that much confidence. I wish I had that much belief. Yeah, you can, you can build that by keeping small promises to yourself and showing up. It's how I stay mentally tough. I stay mentally tough because I show up regardless of how I feel. I show up regardless of how I feel. See, Greg, when I was lying in the hospital in and out for that whole year, I was unable to show up because I was physically unable to show up because I had an IV in my arm and I wasn't discharged from the hospital yet. So it was like being in jail. Somebody told me, you can't go to the office. You can't show up. And if you don't survive this year, you'll never show up again. So coming out of 09, every morning I wake up, I get to show up. I get to be here. I get to drive here. The longer the drive, the better for me. More calls I get to make, more quiet time, more gratitude. The earlier I get here and the, and the longer the drive, the better my day. The better my day. Sometimes I take the long road to the office. I feel like, oh, I'm, I live like 32 minutes away. The other day, I took a 40-minute detour to the office. I drove through Edgemont. I went to where we, where we grew up on Shaganappy Hill. And I just took the long way, watched the sun come up, kind of, kind of by Nose Hill. And I drove in. It was a 40 minute drive into the office. I live 18 minutes away. I'm just, I'm just convincing myself that I can win here. I'm, can, I'm tricking my mind into believing that I can be big here by setting myself up to win. And that's how you stay mentally tough. <clears throat> you show up, even when you don't feel like making calls, you still come. Even when you show up here and you don't make calls, even when you show up and there's a storm going on at home. Because if you don't show up and that stuff's going on, you're going backwards. And it's a scary place to be. And you're one, one year away from slipping out the back door. And, and most importantly, your teammates aren't going to show up. And if your teammates don't show up, it's just a matter of time before it reflects in their personal cash flow. As much as I show up for me, I show up for you guys. Because I know that if I don't show up every day, Pauline is never going to get to 250. I show up for Kelly. I show up for Cheryl. I show up for Nick, one of the next new studs of our hierarchy. 
I show up for Cam, my upline. I show up for Audrey, my bay shop. Even when I'm sick, even when I've been up all night, even when I have ostomy issues and, and, and infections and pain and, and throwing up and all the stuff that nobody ever knows about, I still show up because if I don't show up and Jared's here and he's having an off day and I'm not in the environment, I'm letting my teammates down. So it started with me and then it became about other people. And man, it's so, it's so joyous to show up and keep those promises yourself. So that was number one. Number two, you got to go to work on your mindset. You got to go to work on your mindset. <clears throat> How's your mindset? Are we majoring in the minors? <clears throat> Are we majoring in the minors? Is our ego getting in the way? You know what? Ego, E-G-O, stands for everyone's got one. We all have an ego. But is it getting in the way? Is your ego, is it clouding the messages that you're receiving? Right? When Pauline says, hey, <clears throat> Vegas registration's coming out. Big event registration's coming out. Is your ego getting in the way and you're interpreting it into your brain as, I don't need convention. I don't like to go to events. I'm tired of those. That's your ego speaking. And that's killing your team. It's annihilating your team. Your ego is killing your teammates. Forget about yourself. Self-inflicted gunshot wound is what your ego is doing to you. But forget about you and me for a second. My ego kills my teammates. My inability to be coached and learn from my mentors is hurting you guys. Does that make sense? If I can't adapt and be coachable to what Cam tells me, because my ego is so damn big, because I've been around for 43 years and I've learned a thing or two and I know everything about this and everything about that. That's a bunch of bull crap. I'm a student of the game. I got a lot to learn in every area. And I didn't always think that way. That's why I was flat for a bit. I think that now my ego holds my teammates back. Your ego holds your teammates back. Your resistance, your resistance to showing up, that resentment, that resistance, that, that I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to listen, but not really listen. I'm not going to, I don't want to be 100% aligned because I'm not a sheep. I'm a lion, not a sheep. Rawr! <laughs> yeah, there's a time and a place for that. And I understand that concept. I believe in that too. But we're in a business with leadership. And we're in a business with systems. It's like buying McDonald's and selling jube jubes. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So with mindset, what are we going to do to work on our mindset? There's three ways to improve your mindset. <clears throat> Once the ego is released, there's three ways. You can't grow your mindset if your ego, if you're hanging on to your ego. Once the ego is released, there's three things you can do. Number one, personal development, massive. Massive personal development. I'm constantly sending podcasts to my teammates. I'm constantly listening to podcasts and sending them to people in my base shop. That's the obvious one. Two, you got to get it in a higher vibration environment. I love my home, but the, the vibration home is called a, called a 6.5 ROV. You got to get into a higher vibrating environment around people that have a higher vibration than you. Here's the problem at my house. I have the highest rate of vibration in my home. My wife and I have the highest ROV in my house. I got to get around higher vibrating people. Number two is you got to get around, so higher vibrating environment. Number two is higher vibrating people. You got to get around people that vibrate at a higher level than you. The whole game with, with mindset is if your ROV is six and a half, get around a 7.5 and you'll become a 6.75. The game has become a R R R R ROV. You ever have somebody on your team and you get in front of them and you, they're just like, they're dead. They can be quiet and introverted, but they're just like dead. They just sit there and they're like, they have no vibration. You're like, is there a pulse? <laughs> but it's all part of it, right? It's all part of it. Do you ever just want to go, wake up, wake up. If you're a two, get to a three. If you're a four, get to a five, 
right? But your ROV, it's, it, you're, either, you're either giving your vibration or you're taking from somebody else. And when I get up every morning, my number one goal is to give everything I got to everybody that I see. To give everything that I got to everybody that I see. Man, my head has a pillow at night and I am I'm out. I feel so good. I'm like good tired. Not bad tired, good tired. Because I wake up, I give everything I got, I show up when I need to, and in between, there's lots of crap that happens, right? But you got to get around people that have higher, higher ROV. And I'll end on this, on this section. I constantly hung around winners. I constantly hung around recruiters. I constantly hung around people making 10 times more money than me. Here's a good one for you. I spent 20% of my time around my team and 80% of my time around people that were further ahead than me. I only spent 20% of my time around my team. Because first you become valuable and then you become scarce. If you're always hanging around your team, if you're always available, if you're always a phone call away, if you're answering every team call on the first beep, beep, hey, whoa, what's up? Like you've been waiting for their call? Oh, are you okay, girl? What's going on? Are you okay? And that's the culture. That's your culture. Everyone just calls you and tells you all the things that are going wrong in their life, and that's your culture. Man, your ROV is going to be going down way, 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 way quick. If it's not an emergency and someone's called me to complain, I'll call them back the next day, two, or three. Call me on Monday, I'll probably call them back on Friday after I've had a good week, unless it's urgent. I don't, know, I don't need to be pulled into something that I don't need to be pulled into. 80% of my time was spent around people like Cameron, <clears throat> Corey, Rael, Shernaka, outside of me. And the last point I want to make before I get my slides up is this. <clears throat> you got to sell out to this. You got to sell out as if this was your vehicle to change your life. You got to sell out as if this was your vehicle to change your life. There's got to be evidence that you are selling out to this like you believe it's the vehicle that's going to change something for you in your life. This business doesn't work if you dabble. This business doesn't work if you're half committed. I'm not saying you got to quit your job. That's not what I mean. But if you're not going to keep the promises and you're going to dabble, I had a chat with the girl. I had a really hard conversation with someone on my team yesterday who I mentor. I said, hey, you know what your biggest issue is? I said, you're 75% all in. This is a full-time person. You're 75% all in. Quiet on the phone. Now oh, you're doing four, five, six meetings a week and you say all the right things, but you don't really show up 100%. You don't show up to the office every day. You sometimes miss training, making excuses. I say, here's what you're gonna get. You're gonna do most of the work and feel like you're doing a lot of work in five years, you're gonna have nothing to show for it the tears. She's like, you're right. I do have nothing to show for this. I've been here two years. I have nothing to show for it. A little personal growth, but nothing. I said, yeah, because you're like almost all committed. I said, it's that last 10, 15, 20% that's not really more work. It's just different mindset. You're already doing the meeting, the appointment, the learning, the software, the apps. You're doing that part but you just don't have the last 20%. So you're the kind of person that spends 15, 20 years here and never gets above 80, 90, 100 grand. You just stay stuck. Your team doesn't grow. Same amount of licenses per year. Add three, lose three. Add four, lose four. Because you're not 100% in mentally. And she's like, you absolutely 100% just hit the nail on the head. She goes, this was the talk that I freaking needed. And then I told her how much I believed in her. And I would have not had that talk with her had I not believed that she can pull herself out of it. I said, I don't have that talk with people that I don't believe can make it because that's not a good thing either. They just get, hey, good job, buddy. Good job. See you at the meeting. I believe in you. That's what those people get. But the people like her who I, 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 I believe because she's showed me some things that she's capable, I, she, gets the real, she gets the real me. All right. I'm gonna, I got some slides I want to I wanna go through. Man, I wish I had, a, I had two hours because I got a lot of stuff to go through. <clears throat> I want to talk to you guys about the difference between an employee mindset and an entrepreneur mindset. Now, I want to be, be very clear. 
There's nothing wrong with our friends and family and those who have are employed. There's nothing wrong with it. But we're in a business. This is a business. And there's a different mindset that it takes to win as an employee versus an entrepreneur. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I love going to the hospital and seeing nurses that love being nurses and they love it and they, and they if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be alive. I love that. I love it. I love going to my doctor and him taking care of me. I love going to my chiropractor. I love, I love going to my massage therapist. I love these people. Maybe they don't have the vision to be an entrepreneur. That's okay. But we're all here because we want to be entrepreneurs. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's a different set of mindsets. If I get the first one. First, entrepreneurs improve their skills and employees improve their weaknesses. Let me elaborate on this. We all need to learn the basics like prospecting, calls, presentations. But everybody in this room has a unique blessing as to what makes them special. Brady, there's something about you. You have like this calmness, this steadfastness. If I was being led by you and you were my leader, what I'd appreciate the most about you is you just have this steady energy. I never know what's going on with Brady. I don't know if he's having a bad day, a good day. I don't know if somebody died, if somebody got married. He just, he's steady. He's steadfast. Everybody in this room has a different blessing. Guess what I did? I just worked on what my God-given gifts were. I worked on getting better at what, I, what my talent is. Yeah, do we have to shore up a few things? Yeah, we got to get better at some leadership stuff, some prospecting, some call presentation, the basics. But entrepreneurs improve their skills. They improve their skills and blessings. Work on your skills. Get better, Greg, get better. Practice, get better. Practice, get better. Practice, get better. You don't need to be six foot ten to win here. Thank God. <laughs> you and I are never going to be in the NBA. We're never going to be in the NHL. We're never going to be in the NFL. But if we improve our skills and we get really good at this business, we can beat anybody here. This is a level playing field. This is a level playing field. Number two. Oh, I like this one. Entrepreneurs say no to opportunities. Employees embrace them. Let me elaborate on this one. Employee mindset says yes to everything. Everything. Hey, uh, you want to volunteer for this? Yeah, I do. Hey, you want to go away on a weekend? Yeah, I do. Do you want to do some stuff on Wednesday night instead of coming to training? Yeah, I do. You want to do something on Monday morning instead of show up? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'll do, I'll do anything. I'll, uh, I'll, oh, doctor's appointment next, uh, next Monday at 10? Yeah, I'll take it. Miss training. Entrepreneurs say no to opportunities because they've created a framework that's non-negotiable. Non-negotiable framework. Now, are there certain things you're going to say yes to? Yeah. Employees say yes to everything. Yeah, I'm not at every single one of my kids' practices. I'm not. I'm not at every single little thing. I don't go to every single parent-teacher interviews. I don't go to every single thing. I have three kids. It would be insane. I'd be making $20,000 a year here if I showed up to everything. But you know what's really cool? You know what's really cool? You know what's something really cool that we created in our family? When dad shows up, it's a big deal. I'm at all the games. When dad shows up to practice, my son cannot take his eyes off of me. He cannot skate by the stands without looking at his dad. When I take one of my kids out for lunch, it is a, it's like a spiritual experience. When I am with my kids and I, when I'm at their events and when I'm with them, it is, it is a huge deal that dad's there. Because they're old enough to know that dad's somebody to some people. It's a big deal when I show up. And that'll miss a lot of things, by the way, but it's a big deal when dad shows up because I'm not at everything. I don't show up to everything. I'm not available all the time. They got to fight for my time too. You become valuable and then you become scarce. It should mean something. I'm not around 24 seven. 
I say no to opportunities because if they're, if they're going to affect the alignment of my business goals, my business goals feeds our family, it feeds our family's lifestyle, it feeds our family's vision, it, fe it, it fuels their experiences, and it really makes our time together special. If you're like, how much time do you spend with your kids? Probably more than you do. And if I don't, it's probably, I'm not saying you guys, these are people, the questions that people ask me, not you guys, but people say, how much time do you spend with the kids? I spend a lot of time with my kids, but the time we get is so high quality, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's me driving around the block and pulling up to the front door to pick up my daughter for a date. It's me taking my son to Vegas for a daddy Vegas trip. It's me showing up to the games because there's 1,900 practices that I can't attend. Yeah, I don't do the bottle drives. My wife does the bottle drives because I show up to the games because dad's running a business. And this business is the framework that's going to change our family. I value quality over quantity. Anna's in the office the other day. She's checking out all the rings on the poster. She hand wrote me a note that night. She hand wrote it. Mommy, I love you so much because you give me so many good cuddles. Daddy, I love you so much because you have nice rings. Daddy, when's your next ring? I was like, good question, Anna. <clears throat> good question. But they're starting. See, my, my daughter is seven. They're, she's starting to figure it out. Your kids start to figure out who their parents are. They start to figure out what their parents believe in. When the, your kids see you get up every morning, leave at the same time and go to work as a professional, it changes their mindset. It shows them what they need to focus on. It gives them the example. If I'm controlling my time and not committed and I'm at everything, I'm not showing up to the office, I'm making one grand a month, two grand a month, I'm not committed, I'm miserable, our financial situation's not improving, I'm not saving hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years, over time, growing my financial net worth, talking about these conversations, traveling experiences, that affects them. And it affects how they're gonna raise their children. This is what saying no to opportunities has done for me. It's a different mindset. He'll say, I gotta be at everything. No, I, I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Number three, entrepreneurs delegate, employees practice DIY. Do it yourself. Number three, you see? <clears throat> it's okay. Last warning. <laughs> entrepreneurs delegate, employees practice, do it yourself. Delegate the administration side of your business. Delegate admin. It's a $20 an hour job. Every licensed agent that's an associate or MD should have a part-time assistant. Every single person who's an associate should have somebody they pay to do their paperwork. How do you have time to do $20 an hour jobs? If you have enough time to do a $20 an hour job, you have enough time to go get a part-time job. Because that's what a job pays you. You delegate the admin side. You delegate it. Delegate it. At SMD, I think you should have two people part-time. They don't have to be 40 hours a week, 10 hours here, 10 hours. I think you should have one person dedicated to the client side and one person dedicated to the coordinating licensing side. Two people. Doesn't have to be 40 hours a week. I'd rather have two people 15 hours each than one person 30. Because when you hire two people, it creates competition in your admin staff. Ed Milet and Andy Fursell told me this at Arte. We had a meeting about it. You always hire two people part-time so that one's always looking over the shoulder at the other one, like they can be replaced. I always have two people part-time. Not that my staff would ever be replaced, but this is what Andy and Ed talked about. You get two people part-time working hard for you. If you're an associate and you, and you make $1,000, pay somebody 40 bucks of your paperwork. And here's the truth. They're going to do a better job than you are anyway, aren't they? Because you're the entrepreneur and they're the employee. If they don't do the job, they get fired. Holy crap. Bing. You're a business owner doing administration work. Shit's never going to get done. You want to be on hold for an hour and a half for IA? Yeah. Pay somebody $30 to be on hold for an hour and a half. Let them do the paperwork. Let them follow up. I did paperwork one time in 2005 and I've never seen it since. I don't do paperwork, Greg. I do people. I build leaders, I recruit, I train, I build relationships with clients, and I delegate the rest. I learn it and then I delegate it. 
How was your day? Oh man, I, I spent an hour on hold, but I can't relate to that. I don't do holds. I don't have time. It's $20 an hour job. Get somebody to do it for you. And you know what do? It free up all your time and now you're like, what do I actually do all, all day? Oh my God, I'm doing $20 an hour duties in my business all year. That's why I'm stuck. That's why I'm flat. You will never grow beyond where you are today as a licensed agent if you don't get somebody to help you part-time with your admin work. It's never going to happen. Never. I don't care how much money you're making, you need to think like an entrepreneur. Go spend a few thousand dollars to make 20, 30 grand. Every hour that I have an assistant do, do something for me, I do the $1,000 an hour jobs and they do the $20 an hour jobs. So I ask myself a question. Is me meeting with Krista to mentor her and coach her and build her up, is that a $20 an hour job? Can I delegate that? Hell no. That's a $1,000 an hour job. That's where the doctor comes in. Dr. Holbrook, we got a patient in room one. Ding. Hi, Krista. How you doing today? Zoom and Zoom. A lot of people are doing $20 an hour admin roles in their business and they wonder why they'll never make more than 50, 60, 100, 120, 130 grand a year. It's because they, they, want it, they say they want a big life, but their identity is an assistant. They have, an, they have a $20 an hour identity. That's where the conflict comes in. That's why people don't show up every day to the office because their identity is of a $20 an hour person as an entrepreneur. That's the worst, deadliest combination is entrepreneur mindset or the, being an entrepreneur with an employee mindset. That's the worst combo, right? That's the worst combo. It's, it's, it can be deadly. It takes people out of business, okay? So you spend time building relationships with clients and leaders and showing up and changing people's lives and planning training. Can I delegate planning my training? No, that's a thousand dollar an hour job. Can I delegate this talk? Hey, Audrey, do you want to do my talk? I'll give you 20 bucks. Nope, I got to do it, <clears throat> right? Okay, number four, we got to roll here. Number four, entrepreneurs monotask, employees multitask. I don't multitask. I focus on one main thing every month that feeds my base shop. Do I do multiple things a day? Yeah, but I do one thing at a time. I do one thing at a time. I don't do two things at the same time. I do one thing at a time. So I show up in the morning, I pre-plan my day, I have my tasks, I allot time, and if I'm in that time frame, I don't do anything else. If I'm making calls, Brady, my emails aren't on. People say, oh, I scheduled a two-hour phone line yesterday. How'd it go? Oh, I got interrupted. I got interrupted. With what? Oh, someone came to my office. I don't come to the office because I get interrupted during phone zones. Really? Have you ever heard of locking your door? <clears throat> that works too. My focus, my mono task focus is in my base shop is all based around doing 10 recruits a month. My priority, not as an administrator, but as a leader, is to facilitate a base shop that has 10 recruits a month. With 10 recruits a month, that feeds my production, feeds the confidence, it feeds the funnel, it feeds licensing, net licensing, everything gets fed from that moment. That's my focus. Monotask, don't multitask. Focus on one thing at a time. All right, we got to roll. Number seven. <clears throat> Number five. Page seven. Entrepreneurs have the tough conversations, employees avoid them. See, employees, listen, employee mindset, when they lead people, they don't want to have tough conversations with their team. That's an employee mindset. They don't want to challenge your people. See, we justify this by saying things like, I'm just going to let him do his thing for a while. And we think we're being this like higher law, higher level leader. I'm like the spiritual leader, guru, Zen master. I'm gonna let Lachelle just do her thing. And when she's ready, she's gonna to come to me. Come hither, come hither. But really, you know what that is? That's an excuse for me not to get my hands dirty. That's an excuse for me not to show up every day. I, I, I lead her like that because I don't show up every day. So how can I feel like I can lead her? That's an excuse for not taking responsibility for your business. And one by one, your teammates begin to fail. If you're a hands-off, non-challenge your team leadership, one by one, your, your people will fall. One by one. Every year, you're gonna lose one of the people on your team been here three years that aren't making money. One by one by one by one, you just keep recycling new people. I've seen it for 18 years. 
And what we thought we were helping our teammates by being a soft, non-challenging leader and coming from a good place, and we're always coming from a good place, it actually rips your team apart because it caused stagnation and lack of excitement. Then your team stops showing up. You got the same people coming to meetings as you had a year ago. Does that make sense? You got to have tough conversations as an entrepreneur. If you put in the trust, just like I did with that girl I told you about, if you put in the trust, you can have those conversations. Her life might change, it might not, but it was not going to change had I not had that conversation. It had to happen. Okay, number six, two more. Entrepreneurs believe in seasons, employees believe in balance. Entrepreneurs believe in seasons, employees believe in balance. There is no balance. The question is, what season are you in? What, what business season are you in? What financial season are you in? What recruiting season are you in? What season are you in right now? This is the most important season of the year. What season are you in? Are you in the still trying to show up to the office season? Are you still trying to figure this out season? Are you still trying to commit season? You got to figure out what season you're in because you're never going to be fully balanced and we're always going through different seasons. We're always going through different seasons. And my last point is this, I'm going to close. Employees are threatened by smarter people. Entrepreneurs hire them. Every Tuesday morning, I do a staff meeting for my, what are we at, John? <clears throat> How many on that call? Five? five With our five staff on that call. Some of them part-time. Don't be impressed by the number. It's more the delegation tasks. Some of them are a couple hours a week, potentially, depending on the week. Don't be overly impressed by the number. It's not about being smart. It's about paying attention and implementing. You don't need to be smart. You have to pay attention. You have to pay attention and implement. We we're the murder mystery yesterday. My wife's like, how did you win the murder mystery? I'm like, all oh, simple. I just paid attention. She's like, what do you mean? I said, I just listened. <laughs> and they told me all the answers. I pay attention and I implement. But so many of us are so busy in our own heads and I'm, I'm, I'm suck and I'm bad at this or I'm doing it my way or I'm so defiant. Pauline, I'm going to do it my way. Right? Most, I'm going to do it my way, my way or the highway. We're so busy with all that other crap in our head. We don't have time to pay attention. We don't have time to be coachable. We don't want to get our feelings hurt. Oh, I don't want to ruin my reputation. What are you going to do here that's going to ruin your reputation? My God, you got to get out of your own head. So I'm going to close on this. This has been fun. You guys having fun? Yeah. <clears throat> I love you guys. I'm going to close on this. You don't have to be strong enough every day to win. You're never going to have teammates that stop quitting. You're never going to have appointments that never reschedule. Not all of your policies are going to stay on the books. You're never going to have the doubts creeping in when your imposter syndrome is taking over. That never stops. Your imposter syndrome never stops. It just goes to the next level. You're never going to stop wondering if there's more you could do to win faster. It never stops. All you can do is create some framework that sets you up to win every day when you have no confidence left. And when you build that framework, that is the beginning of an amazing journey. And that framework, like we said, you show up no matter what as planned. You do what needs to be done, not how you feel. You strategically delegate all the admin. And lastly, you sell out to your business like it's the vehicle that could change your life. So I appreciate you guys.